So uh, this is all there is. This is everything. Being this. This is nothing. Being this. This is the absolute appearing to be relative. This is formless in form. There's only that. There's simply only energy. I like the word energy. Totally impersonal energy, which arises as everything and is everything. And that, that energy is completely free from wild and chaotic. And it also can appear as ordered and sensible and logical. It's everything. There's just energy. Energy is life. Life is energy. That's all there is. And because it's completely free to be anything and is anything and everything, it can also appear as something limited. If it, could, if it couldn't be, it shouldn't be free if it can't be anything. So it can also be unfree, limited. Apparently, but the whole of it is simply an appearance out of no thing. Life, what we see as the world and us, or apparently us in it and everything that's happening, is simply nothing appearing as something. So it's nothing appearing as an energy which seems to happen and move around and be alive. And, and so part of that energy can be contracted. There can be uh, an energy in any form, and one of the forms it can take on, or appear to take on, is that of a contracted energy, something uh, limited. And it seems to happen uniquely in the human form. What uniquely seems to happen in that contracted energy is suddenly what arises is a sense of identity. Suddenly there's a feeling I'm a person, there's a person in here, I am a person. Suddenly that arises, an identification takes place. Suddenly there's a me. And the me uh, grows into the whole body, the whole sense of being a separate me is something that's energetic, held in the whole body. Separation, me, the self, the I, is not a thought or an idea or belief. Those are just um, recordings of the me. Me, the self, the I, is an energetic sense of being separate. And for the me, as it grows in, in that sense of being separate, so it becomes, it feels more and more that it is real. I am a real person. I really exist. I'm real. I know I exist. I know I'm real. And I know that I live in a world full of other people, with other, other selves, other me's are in this world. I can see them. They tell me they are people. <laughs> so the me grows up in a world full of me's. And that more and more, more confirms that it's real. And the other thing that it feels very much is real is that it can do things itself. I have my own free will and choice. I live in a story and in that story I have the choice to make that story better or worse. It's my, I can do it. I have to do it. And the other thing that comes with that identity, that separate identity, in that sense of separation, underneath that sense of separation, there's also a seeking are, not, are looking for something else. Because there's also, built into that sense of separation, is a sense of lack. As though there's something missing. There's a sense of that. Most people wouldn't recognise it necessarily. They wouldn't say, I'm separate or whatever. They just get on with their lives and make the best they can of them. But for some people, there's a sensitivity, more of a sensitive feeling about a lack, something missing, a feeling that I've lost something. Where, where is some, there's something that's lost? So because there is, in a sense, something lost, because uh, directly the feeling of separation arises, there's also a feeling that uh, wholeness or home or something, um, something immeasurable 
is not there anymore. And so there's a sense of, of this lack which feels dissatisfying. And the more sensitive there, the sensitivity there is there, the more there is a sense of dissatisfaction, feeling that something is missing. And so what happens to some people is that they try to find what's missing through religion or therapy or something called enlightenment. They read about the nature of enlightenment and that sounds like it's an answer. Maybe for some people the answer is to be a Christian or a Buddhist or something of that sort. But for other people they look for something called enlightenment. Really basically what they're looking for is to be fulfilled again. They don't feel fulfilled. <coughs> Because the other thing that happens for me is that the me that lives in its own separate reality, its own separate reality, feels that it is, lives in a subject-object world. So it feels as though it is a subject and it is a something in, the, in, 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 in a world that is also lots of something else's. <laughs> so it looks out of its body and sees everything else as separate. So it sees a separate tree, and a separate person, and a separate sky, and a separate everything. And that, again, is dissatisfying, that feeling that everything is out there, I'm here, and everything is apart from me. And so, uh, when, when people have make a search, they, they search for, let's say, enlightenment, and they believe because they've grown up and used their own free will and choice to make their story work or not work, then they also feel very strongly that in order to find fulfillment, they need to use their choice again to look for that. And they need to learn how to find fulfillment. So they go to somebody else who might teach them, they think, to find fulfillment, to find this thing that seems to be missing. And usually when they do that, they get a list of things to do. Because they go to a teacher, uh, they, they, they go to somebody who is saying that they are a teacher and they can help you to find something called fulfillment, enlightenment, happiness, whatever you like. And the list uh, they're given is a list which seeks to uh, help them to change. Maybe just to be more open but also possibly to be more clear, more still. Somehow they need to become uh, more open, more still for fulfillment to happen. And so they're given usually a set of processes or exercises which they can use to become uh, more open or more still. And so um, all of that arises in this, what I call the story of me. Directly me arises, then what arises with it is a story. I am, I was born, I'm going to live and die one day, and I'm in a story which I can make better. And so the teaching of enlightenment, or whatever you like to call it, is one of the ways in which people in their story feel they can make that story better. Mm -hmm. But essentially, the teaching or the idea that there's someone there with free will and choice to go along a path and make their life better is all part of the same story. It's actually, of course, another story. All teachings of becoming are essentially a story about becoming, about becoming more still and so on, or more available, or more purified in some stricter discipline. So what we're sharing together here is a very radical possibility which exposes the idea or the belief that there is even a me, that there is even an I or a self. It exposes, and um, it, well, the suggestion here is that, the, is that the construct of me or the I or the self is illusory. It's a total illusion which becomes and seems to become more and more real. And that illusion drives the seeker to find a state called self-enlightenment, which is also totally illusory. 
And what's also being suggested here is that not only is there no one who can make a choice and, and, and follow a path, but also there is no path to follow. What's being suggested here is that what is longed for already is. Now this, this all, obviously, this can't be explained in any sort of logical way because we're also, what we're also discussing together and showing together is a mystery, it's a paradox. The paradox is that this is no thing being everything. This is the absolute appearing as the relative. So that's the paradox we're pointing to, but it can't be described. But it can be pointed to in some way. And so we can share together in words uh, the idea of the me or the I or the self and what that seems to, what sort of concepts and beliefs that carries with it. And we can also share together uh, a pointing towards a mystery which can't be described because it can't be known. And somehow or other, what can be uncovered is the absolute wonder that what is sought is already this. <laughs>